the most revered Swami Srimad Gautamanand Ji Maharaj, distinguished monks, esteemed invitees, ladies and gentlemen, Anai Varkom, Vanakam, Namaskar to all of you. Ramakrishna Mat Chennai is celebrating its annual Vivekananda Navaratri from today to commemorate the historic return of Swamiji from America after his famous and historic speech at the religion of parliament, as at the parliament of religion. This year it is unique as it is the 125th anniversary of his return. And Ramakrishna Mat Chennai is also celebrating 125th year of its existence. On this auspicious occasion, I extend my warmest greetings and best wishes to all of you. Swami Vivekananda was a unique personality. His physical magnetism The radiance of his intellectual depth and a spiritual comprehensiveness have been unparalleled. He has been the icon of every Bharatiya, especially the youth, in whom he reposed his faith for building a Bharat of his dream, a Bharat socially cohesive, materially prosperous, militarily strong, intellectually superior, and spiritually rooted to its eternal spirituality of Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam. Ma Bharati had suffered unspeakable oppression, suppression, exploitation by series of invaders and colonizers from Central Asia and Europe. This land was completely devastated. The pain was unbearable for Mahabharati. And then she gave birth to her most dynamic son, Swami Vivekananda. Swami so traveled all through the length and breadth of this country. He was appalled by the abject poverty of its people, disorders in society, divisions in society. He was anguished. He wondered, what happened to this land where thousands and thousands of years before the birth of Western civilization Long, long before the Western civilization was in, at its embryonic stage, our rishis and sages had achieved that summit of wisdom about the unity of creation and oneness of being. 
they chanted the mantras of Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina and Vasudheva Kutumbaka. Our Vedic richas are full of such revelations and praises. And Nasadiya Sukta of our Rig Veda is full of pithy and pertinent questions which are intellectually stunning about the creation and the issues related with it. One feels completely stumped at the level of wisdom several thousand years before the common era which our rishis and sages had revealed to the world, revealed to our people. And subsequent traditions of our rishis and sages further elaborating those questions, dwelling on them and coming up with subsequent scriptures like Upanishads and Brahmans. What happened to the people, those who were at the summit of human wisdom. In terms of material prosperity, India was the richest country in the world. 1750, when the British began colonizing this country, the industrial production of India and China together accounted for 73% of the global industrial production. And in that 73% share of India was more than that of China. There was no America, there was no Europe. And in the subsequent 150 years, what happened? We became a specimen of misery and pity. This agitated Swamiji. He came to Kanyakumari. He meditated over the rock for days and nights together. And there he received that enlightenment. The mission of his life. The answer to his question that what happened to this ancient, rich civilization and prosperous people who despite numerous kings and kingdoms lived as one from Kanyakumari to Kashmir and from Kach to Kamru, they were all one even beyond Kach and Kamru. And he set on the mission of building Bharat. And so, I pay my humble tribute to the sacred soil of Tamil Nadu where Swamiji received the enlightenment. The answer to his question. And the answer was that the centuries of colonization and invasion had tried to kill the soil the sense of selfhood, the sense of pride in the Bharatiyas. When the British, by the time they had had a conquest of Delhi in 1803, They knew that they were going to now. Now they had captured almost the most part of India. And so they had to carry on their empire here, make it sustainable. And so they have strategically embarked upon certain policies. And the core of that policy was to destroy the sewer, the sense of pride of Bharatiyas. They commissioned people like James Mill, father of John Stuart Mill. James Mill was 
a Baptist priest. They commissioned him to write a very, very rabid priest. They commissioned him to write a concocted, a doctored history of India. And he wrote volumes, some over five volumes of history of British India, depicting India in such a poor light. Everything of Bharat was lamentable, was worthy to be discarded. And then they set on the mission to destroy this India, its social fabric, its cultural fabric, its spirituality, its sense of pride. And they didn't do that in any silent manner. They did it very brazenly. In 1814, when the British Parliament passed an act, India Charter Act, 1813, India Charter Act 1813. In the debate in the British Parliament, they talked so ill of this country. They said Indians were religiously deprived and morally depraved. Religiously deprived because in this country, there was hardly gospel. It has its own rich, ancient spirituality. And so, in their estimate, they said, they assessed this land and its people to be religiously deprived and morally depraved. And so, the, they made it into the act, mandated the British government and its agencies to evangelize India. To give it gospel. And they let loose the hordes of missionaries from Europe and America to come and convert people. It was a part of a stated policy of British, mandated by an act of British Parliament. In 1858, after the 1857, the collective rejection of the British rule in India, when the people of this country rose up, and finally in 1858 the British government decided to take over from the East India Company. At the time, the British Prime Minister, Henry John Temple, in British Parliament, he gave a speech, and in that he also made it very clear. He went a step further. He said, evangelization of India is not only our duty, duty mandated by the Parliament, Act of Parliament, but it is also a necessity to make the empire enduring. And then there came all sorts of thesis, white man's burden. It was their burden to help sow the light to this wretched people of India, in their estimate. It began. Systematically they destroyed this country. It was in that backdrop that Swami Vivekanand was born and he saw the plight. And when he got the answer on the rock at Kanyakumari, he set on the mission. His mission to build a new Bharat. And as a part of that, he first decided to go and participate in the parliament, World Parliament of Religion at Chicago to tell the world that India was not a dark subcontinent. Bharat had its spirituality, its religion, which is far, far superior to others. And there he dazzled the world. And on his return, he first landed at Tamil Nadu show. 
he moved around because he saw hope in the people of this land. Because northern part of this country was badly devastated by the invaders and colonizers, the institutions that could sustain that sense of that shared common spirituality were badly damaged. Here in this land, it remained relatively preserved. Friends, there are numerous diversities in this country. Diversity of language, cuisine, dress, geography. But underneath this entire spectrum of diversity, the entire people of Bharat have remained ever united organically in their shared, universal, eternal spirituality. That we are one. It was that spirituality which made people from Kashmir and Kamrup to travel to Tamil Nadu, to Rameshwaram and Kanchi, and people from here to go to Kashi and other places, Nalanda, to study, to share, exchange, to debate, to debate, to discuss, because that was our intellectual and a spiritual tradition. Nothing was imposed. It all a theory had to be validated. When Adi Sankaracharya got the light of Advaita, he didn't impose on people. He went through the whole country, traveled up to the foothills of Himalaya. He debated. There were times when he received setback. He came back and finally succeeded. That was our Bharat. United together as one family beneath the surface of all the diversities, all the apparent differences. Swamiji set on the mission and a spa. Lit a spark in the hearts and minds of our youth. And then that spark grew into a massive raising fireball, which eventually cleansed this land of the foreign rule. And Bharat became independent in 1947. Thousands and thousands of children of Bharat, they gave their life. It is their blood and sweat and sacrifices which brought us the independence. An independent Bharat was born. But the task ahead was to build the Bharat of the dream of Swami Vivekananda. Socially cohesive, materially prosperous, militarily strong, intellectually superior, and spiritually all-embracing. Social cohesiveness, the basis for it, as you rightly said, is our shared cultural spirituality. Mahakavi Subramanya Bharti has beautifully narrated that cohesiveness, that unity. He himself was a great devotee and a follower of Swami Vivekananda. We all know how Sister Nivedita influenced Mahakavi, his thoughts, his ideas. When Mahakavi said, Bharat Mata Seppu Mori Padnetrudiyan Enil Chintanai Ondrudiya. Bharat Mata speaks in 18 languages, but its thinking is one. 
This is unity in diversity. A socially cohesive Bharat. A materially prosperous because poverty is not a virtue. It is a sin. India was prosperous and India had to be more prosperous than what it was in the past. Militarily, it had to be strong because Swamiji learned one lesson. That this, our spirituality which has been indestructible, Sanatan, which has survived for thousands of years, but yet it suffered because while we were spiritually strong, we were otherwise weak and divided. Sukraniti says, Balino vasga sarve durbalasya cha satrava. If you are strong, you have friends around. If you are weak, you are surrounded by enemies. This universal spirituality of oneness of creation and Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam will be appreciated appropriately if Bharat is strong. Intellectually, of course, it has to be superior, not only a spiritual, in the realm of a spirituality, but also in realms of science and technology. And now we see the changes happening. Changes happening all around. In 75 years, we have made significant progress. But we have a greater goal to achieve. The goal is to make Bharat of Swami Vivekananda's dream. His vision. Under an able leadership, the country is moving forward with a vision. And we have proved it. Our people, our youth, are doing such miraculous things, incredible things, our people together have achieved in the last six, seven years what was considered incredible. Till about seven years back, 60% of India was defecating in the open. Very embarrassing. Today it is gone. At the time when the movement for cleaning the Swaksha Bharat started, And we started putting focus on building more and more toilets. Toilets in every home, in every school, every institution. And not only toilets, toilets for men, toilets for women, toilets for boys, toilets for girls. Today, we have done it. At the time, people, many people ridiculed it. It was not possible. It happened. Impossible has happened. in every field. Now our Matri Shakti is waking up for the first time. The gender ratio which was in favor of men, now it is turning around. And by sample survey it shows that perhaps today we have more women than the men in our country. This Matri Shakti, raising of Matri Shakti is essential for Achieving the goal of the Bharat of Swamiji's dream. In every field. Our youth, in a startups, they are dazzling the world. New, new, incredible ideas are being experimented upon by, by our youth with greater self confidence. The confidence to try something new and with a courage that if we fail, we will try again. This, their achievements are startling the world. Today, the world is looking at India 
with expectation of taking the leadership of the world. And we are doing that. We have to fulfill that expectation of the world. Take the case of climate crisis. It's a global crisis. We are seeing the curtain raisers of it. Anthropocentric view of Western philosophy, Western way of looking at life, that human beings are at the center of creation and the rest of creation is for the enjoyment of it. And reckless, rampant exploitation of nature and its resources has put so much a stress on the planet. Mother Earth is gasping for bread. And now Bharat, under a naval leadership, is showing the way. Saving the earth, addressing the core issues of climate, is harmonious existence. Believe that we are not at the center, but we are part of it. And so there is a massive drive on clean energy, renewable energy. In 2016, the Prime Minister set the target, by 2025 we will have 100 gigawatt of clean energy, renewable, non-carbon. At the time, it looked so incredible, so unachievable that many people had doubts. But look, half the time, September 2021, we have already crossed it. Now the new target is by 2030 we'll have 500 gigawatt of renewable energy, non-carbon energy. And by 2070, Bharat will be free of carbon energy. This is bold. While the advanced rich countries responsible for this degradation of climate are not yet mending the ways, Bharat has shown the way, taken the leadership. Grow. Recent pandemic, the global pandemic, the whole world affected COVID-19 and its variants. It was Bharat with its limited resources but clear determination, solid will within no time from a scratch, from nowhere, we built and health infrastructure enviable to the world and not be our scientists and technicians developed vaccines in record time and unlike the rich countries, advanced countries who when developed the vaccine they started looking at an opportunity to make more money it is Bharat which gave vaccine to over 100 countries, people, needy people in over 100 poor countries. This is leadership. And now, the task before us to build the Bharat of Swami's dream. Swami's vision is we have set a target. By 2047, in the next 25 years, which is called Amrit Khan, we have to build this Bharat. Socially cohesive, materially prosperous, militarily strong, intellectually superior, and spiritually rooted in Vasudeva Kutumbakam outlook, which has been ours for thousands of years. To achieve this, the youth of this country, as Swamiji put his hopes in them, and so is our hope. Every youth has to feel. Swami Vivekanand within him or her. This dream, this vision is achievable. 
and we will achieve it. Bharat is unstoppable. Now everyone knows. No force on earth can stop its march forward. Forward march while rooted in our ancient old heritage. Our celebrated eternal spirituality. But to give it a speed, to give it a desired momentum, it is necessary that every youth of this country feels Vivekananda within him or her and whichever station in life they are, whichever profession they are in, whatever they do, keep focus, in your focus, Bharat. Bharat has to assume the leadership of the world in the next 25 years. To fulfill the dream of Swamiji's Ramakrishna mission, mission and Ramakrishna Mat, they have been doing a yeoman service. Far flung areas of the country, remote areas, where until recently the presence of government itself was minimal, almost non existent. Even in those far flung Forsaken areas, Ramakrishna mission, mission people, its sadhak, its karikartas, they have been living in most hostile environment and they have been serving the people. They have been building the youth, in growing them, giving them holistic education, where they are intellectually sharp spiritually enriched and physically strong. They have been doing human service and they all deserve our appreciation and congratulation. I wish the Ramakrishna uh, Mat and Ramakrishna Mission, this family, every member of it, All the best. You are doing a fabulous job. You are translating the vision of Swamiji in a most humble, silent, but fully dedicated manner. I salute the sacrifices of the monks, those who have given their life. And they are giving their life in service of this nation building Bharat of Swamiji's tree. I wish you all the best. Nandri Namaskar.